center. Hello, everyone. Well, I was born in 1992. In that same year, my country's president, Joaquin Sisano, signed a peace agreement ending a 16 year, year of civil war in Mozambique, in which one, more than one million people died. We also lost much of our natural heritage. As an example, in Gorongosa National Park, where I work, we lost more than 95% of the large animals. So Shisano wondered, could we heal our nation? Could we heal our national parks? Could we heal our people? So today, I'm going to talk about three things we do in Gorongosa to help to try to achieve that goal. I'm talking about community development. I'm talking about science in the deep side. And also, I'm talking about encouraging long-term support and ownership, stewardship of the park. Shisano and Nelson Mandela visited national parks in 1992, too. And they developed a new philosophy of managing protected areas. As some of you may know, neither of those men were even allowed to visit the national parks when they were boy, just because they were the wrong color. Then, as you also may know, in the 20th century, most, in most of Africa, national parks were just playgrounds for wealthy people. The traditional community, communities that live next door receive nothing. In fact, they bore the opportunity cost of not being able to farm on that land. So Shisano and Mandela stated that national parks and their countries would no longer be as fortresses that keep local neighbors out. They say that national parks will serve the local people, that national parks will help lift people out of poverty. So please understand, we Africans, we love our wild lands. There I say, we feel a deeper connection that you might ever know or I would ever explain in public. For example, when I see a lion. For us, it's, it's, just, it's not just a charismatic animal. It's our totem, as a sign of our clan, a reminder of our ancestry. So there was never a question that we would still once want national parks once we gain control of our countries. Yes, we did, but we needed to change the character. Shisano needed help to restore our national parks. We are one of the poorest, most poorest countries in the world. So he looked for private sectors to help him. And he met, in 2003, a human rights practitioner named Greg Carr. Mr. Carr, President Shisano, and other leaders in Mozambique spent few years working towards the new co-management contract. This contract states that Gorongosa National Park should be a human development engine that should serve and help the local people even as the park replenishes its wildlife and protects the biodiversity. So the Gorongosa National Park is also surrounded by a massive area we call buffer zone where 200,000 people live. And because agriculture is still a primary activity in Mozambique, we help, we help these people with agriculture programs through our community development programs because we want to ensure that they will have food security. We also help them with health care because we want to make sure that levels of desnutrition, malaria, AIDS, and many other things are down in this community and also with education. You know, in my country, poverty still has a face of a woman, just because the last time a woman spends at school, the higher is the number of children she might have. In rural Mozambique, girls get married of age of 13 and 15, and we want to break that cycle. 
But how do we do that? We have an idea. If we keep, if we retain girls at school, they'll have less premature marriage, they'll have more choices. We will work towards gender equality and many other things. So we're now working on girls' education, which is something that's going to impact these communities in the next 10, 20 years in an extraordinary way. Gorongos also employs more than 500 people, and 98% of these people are Mozambicans. We want also to assure that women also get the benefits of a national park. We just hired our first rangers on the history of women rangers on the history of Gorongosa National Park. Due to our rangers, all of them, good work and support from community, wildlife numbers are up again. Before we started the restoration project, we, were, we had less than 10,000 large animals. Now, we're up to 80,000 animals. We're also protecting a unique rainforest in Mozambique, on Mount Gorongosa. The Mount Gorongosa rainforest is a relic of the ancient Congolese rainforest that once covered all Africa. We're helping the community to grow coffee trees. Coffee is planted with native trees and provides an excellent income. And the park and the people work in harmony. We have heard the, the owner of Professor Wilson visit us three times and serving us in a, as an advisor. In fact, we named our research center the E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Laboratory. I am proud to be part of the science team. And let me tell you what we do. The Wilson Lab was created to provide a scientific background for conservation. And we do that by fulfilling three distinct things. First of all is documentation. We are documenting our biodiversity knowledge. We are creating a baseline. We're documenting everything from bacteria to fungi, plants and animals. Since the opening of the Wilson Lab four years ago until now, we're able to document more than 5,000 species and some of them are even new to science. The other thing we do is long-term research and monitoring. Because we want to know what's happening in our place in a scale of decades, we are tracking the change of an environment, from the environment through vegetation surveys, grass cover, and also animal counts. And of course, we have smaller individual projects in various topics in the park. The third one, and probably most important, the Wilson Lab in Gorongosa National Park is an educational institution. It's a training ground for high quality conservation education. And the lab will receive scientists from all over the world and with the different areas of, of expertise. These scientists know they won't be there forever. And they also want to know that there will be a Mozambican to collaborate with in the future. So we are now training a new generation of conservationists and researchers, which I am one. In fact, I just heard my master's in conservation biology in the UK. Thank you. We also... We also see and agree that Gorongosa National Park at one million acres might not be enough to sustain all of our biodiversity. So we support this idea, this dream of half earth of this conference. And I'm happy to share some news with you, maybe for the first time in public. We uh, will be able to nearly double the size of Gorongosa, connecting the park to the Great Rift to touch the Zambezi River. We are adding a large hunting concession where hunting will cease and other bits of land to achieve this dream. This park expansion is only possible because we develop support from the local, national, and regional level. And furthermore, we are linking the park with other stakeholders and land users and trying to bring them all with us in a single and common vision of effective conservation. This park expansion will also help us to do two things that are priority for Gorongosa National Park. We'll, it will improve, it will increase our biodiversity protection, and we also improve the livelihoods of the people surrounding it. 
In closing, I would like to thank Professor Wilson and National Geographic to dear and permanent friends of Gorongosa and the Mozambican people. Thank you. <laughs> I brought this. Okay, I have the pointer.